because I can't get the login in, so it's blue anyway. Ah, uh, give me a second. It's your turn to read anyway. Do, 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 do. Yep. So, uh, you know, whenever. All right, hang on. Battery is about half. <laughs> Thanks. This is great, guys. Are you going to read it or not? No, nah, hang on. We're, yeah, we better not be recording. Oh, yeah. We've been recording for oh, yeah, 30 he seconds. Recording. He gave you the recording on, sign. I'm still working on the connection here. Okay. That's great. That sounds great. Go. Just go. Welcome no, to on. Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of LeChamp or lucky track dog you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. Why? We even think you drift hella fush peeps are all right, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of entry-level and amateur endurance racing. It might be on the spot, hella sweet, but terrible, but if you're lucky, Chrissy might give you just the tip. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back to listen to another totally rad episode of our podcast. Oh, episode oh, 51. 51. So I can't believe it. Every time it goes up, it gets crazier. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It does keep getting to be a bigger number. Yeah. We're still who'd, here. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? And yeah. maybe people are still listening. But if not, we think <laughs> no, we're funny. So it's cool. Really. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to our first uh, segment, What You Working On, Mental. What's going on with you? So last week I mentioned that I was joining the AMP Fall Rental Karting League, and so I had my inexpicuous Rental Karting League debut. Uh, they had really timing issues, so they were starting out with new software. So they had us go out there in the first race, and I actually managed to not kill anyone, and then they they – I had to grid us up completely randomly. So I ended up literally back of the pack because I was the guy that That's they didn't nice know to go. who I was. And they ran the first race and then they, they said they were going to grid us up in reverse order. So we're lying, waiting to get gridded up. And the guy points at me as number three and I lost my mind. I'm like, there's no way I was next to last. I wasn't way. that slow. And way. Well, oh, like, no way. Because I only like two people got around Did you me. get out and like throw your stuff down and be like, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm a real racer. I don't have time for this crap. Right. Well, <laughs> so. You get into the cool places and you now listen now. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually having that obnoxious, that guy conversation in my helmet while I'm driving around the track to grit up. Because they grit, they, they point at you on the backside of the track. And I get up to the front and the, and the, the two guys in front of me and then the guy that grits up fourth go, Dude, they got this totally backwards because the two guys in front were the one and two. So I actually got third in the first race, which it would have been better if I stayed angry because then I, I, I proceeded <laughs> to just absolutely loop it halfway through and finish a good solid mid pack in the second race. So, yeah. Mental? Uh, yeah. I, I love you because you're either fast or you loop it. <laughs> I, I think that really sums up your experience as racing with us. Pretty or, much. or in life in general, it seems. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my! And and on that note, uh, I did drive strong at uh, AMP this weekend, which is awesome. I actually had like a brother and sister in the car, and another guy lived in the same town. They were hilarious. They learned lots. I mean, they actually went, "Oh, you really want this car to go sideways? Okay." And it was a really really good time. But on the way back, the Porsche developed a misfire, and the the engine codes are telling me four of my six cylinders are misfiring so i've got to replace all the coil packs and i'm sure our guest who we'll get to in a bit probably has some input on that one so it's parked while i vfr it to work all this week and i'm not going to make it down to nola for the nasa time trials womp, womp. Mm -hmm. nope. nope no misfiring porsche doesn't sound that weird at all <laughs> chrissy what you working on so after uh, I was away last week, uh, Jeff and I were off site in our from our normal places. We're all back home and nor normal locations now. Uh, but I uh, after came home Thursday, not as late as I planned. 
originally, which is great. So I was here for about 12 hours in Pennsylvania. And then Chris and I ventured to the Cape for a long weekend, uh, which was including uh, us applying for our marriage license. So that is whoa, done. Whoa. Yeah. And, and it was so easy. Thank you, state of Massachusetts, for making something easy. Um, and so <laughs> it was uh, great. Except and- that we have to actually go there in person both to do this and pick it up all during business hours of a small municipality. So... Okay. Once we're they're, there, they're very nice. And it was, <laughs> yes. yes, yes, it was, the experience applying was fine. If you just could really just type the things in on the internet and just push hey. and certify send, then it would be a lot easier, but. Yeah. Hey, did anybody tell y'all that y'all got the same first name? <laughs> no, she didn't even say that. <laughs> so it's cool. I mean, on paper, it's not. Well, but... they're used to the same last names before you get married where you're from there, Russell, but not. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, but it, anyway, we had perfect weather, great beach time. Now back to the real world just for a little while because we got something cool going up. Uh, Chris, what are you working on? I changed the oil in the Mercedes and sent a sample to Blackstone. And How many hundreds mess. of dollars does that cost? It only <laughs> takes eight and a half quarts of Mobile One Zero W40 and a very specific German oil filter made of felt. since since we have a guest why don't you explain what the mercedes is that's a cls 63 and we quite like it it's very nice it's not made of felt it is made of titanium it is uh so we did that and then picked our ship at the airport and then went to the cape so we put like a thousand miles in mercedes this week in great comfort and yep. Did some oh, driving. only one tire. Tri- you missed the. You forgot the tire issue. Uh, that's true. I did forget the tire issue. Yeah, we Wait, again. The uh, other other one. side and the rear. It's only okay. This one's a slow leak. We just went out to get get stuff on Saturday morning, and the the, the car said, "Hey, tire pressure low," and it gives you pretty like, much good warning. Like yeah. when it's down to thirty five, it tells you. So we put some air in it uh, by breaking all of the t- really crappy Chinese twelve volt compressors at my dad's house, including the one that lives in the Mercedes. <laughs> And, we need to we need to replace them yeah. asap. And uh, <laughs> anyway, got enough in it and made it home. And I still haven't put any air in it. It still hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't come yeah. on again. Well, I didn't drive so. today because no. I worked at home. Okay. Um, the NSX windshield got replaced today. After it I, took I a have rock. questions on this one. It took a yes. quite, it took a rock. So it, it took. I, so I did it through the app for my insurance company, which all through Safely. That's how they work. And it. Then they immediately called me back and said, "Yeah, we can't do that appointment. Um, we're just gonna, this gonna yeah, take." You, you set it up, and it was like, "Yeah, do you want to do them come like out three tomorrow?" Three days from now, like, like, "Yeah, sure, sure. yeah, come on yeah, out." They said, "No, no, Man, it's take wow, a while. Safe Flight is on the ball, right?" <laughs> For normal ones, yes, <laughs> the NSX like, not. Two weeks oh, yeah. later, they say, "Oh yeah, okay, we finally got the part, so we can put it in next week." So the guy came in today, did a really nice job. He was very, he definitely took took care and tried to do it right. I appreciate that. Um, and then we're also he, probably watching him, so there's that. I wasn't. I was working. I had stuff to do today. So, uh, but I, I did thank him very nicely, and I gave him a cold bottle of water in the middle of it because uh, it was really hot out. And I gave him a twenty dollars tip when he left because I appreciated it. And uh, so he showed me the bill, and the total bill to get the release of this windshield was twenty eight hundred dollars. <sighs> See, I, I bet he also took care with that because you know. They, they they probably have like levels of technician, and when NSX comes across with that much of a bill, they're like, yeah, we're not sending Bob. You know, they're not sending the Safe Light version of Mental out there. <laughs> yeah. that would, you know, the guy who the like Safe Light version it is, is he pulls it out of the <laughs> right. van. Yeah. Like, but Mental man. gets assigned the Hyundai's. That's that's yeah. the job <laughs> Mental's doing. He, he was being being extra careful of that fresh piece of glass, but uh, yeah, fortunately, my deductible for comprehensive is one hundred dollars so that's, nice that's what it cost me and it cost my insurance company twenty six hundred ninety nine dollars and forty one cents and that's uh exotic car we life said, heck yeah, yeah. <laughs> exotic so, car life so, so chris just a question ha- has any major insurance company like gone under lately no, yeah. it doesn't happen. <laughs> They're still making money off of all of us. I don't know what your bill is, but I'm There's sure some, it's in there somewhere. There are some smaller and medium ones that have. I, I've just dealt with one who's going He's under. He's not right asking now, you the actual question. No, no, no I, don't, I don't actually care about the insurance industry. I'm just I mean, saying, don't cry for whoever the hell your insurer is. I mean, is. you want to start talking loss ratios. We're going to lose some of our uh, our guests. But uh, No, we don't want to. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh, nobody, wait, wait, has, wait. nobody has their bingo card out. Yeah, where's the bingo card? <laughs> right. 
We, we start All right, hey, well, Jeff, what are you doing these days? Um, <laughs> nothing but working. So uh, last week, if you remember, I was in the uh, the the closet of shame of echoes and and <laughs> fantastic reverb. Uh, since I have finished, uh, yes, yes, thank you. I, I I haven't even heard the show, including the parts that I was actually on. I could barely hear. So uh, between the camp I was managing for my freshman and opening the semester, I have had one single day off in this week, and I spent it at Happy Valley in Penn State with 105,000 of my closest friends having heart attacks while we watched uh, Appalachian State almost beat my wife's Woo. alma mater of Penn State. It was Go a, Mountain Men. Woo. Jeez. Oh. What a crazy day that was yeah. and you know a, a four hour drive a four hour football game and a four hour drive is definitely the way you want to spend your day off when you have none for two weeks but it was still enjoyable um in other news i have been able to sneak in the final uh bits for the ombre okay. and getting all the ombre parts together so i will most likely be picked up this weekend so the world's only yeah. road racing ombre isuzu ombre in existence will <laughs> no longer be operated by our team um yes, yeah it's going to a good home we're excited it and really is actually like, yeah like our team right that's yeah. true so, they spent oh. half their time in the paddock our paddock anyway right well, and there's there's some themers extraordinaire if you're not following uh, uh, Garage yeah. Heroes, Garage Heroes in training on Instagram. They are friggin' up, and they made a life size. Yeah, they Insta made a life size Spider Man out of spray foam, and then oh, set it on their it neighbors. Was. Set it on their neighbor's car so that their the four year old could come out and be amazed that Spider Man was at the house. Very cool. Yes, yeah, so they said they would like the truck because they're theming hard, and it would be easier to theme the car when they had the car. Yes. yes, yes. So they'll have it soon. So uh, you may have heard a little snicker from the background when we mentioned Isuzu Ombre <laughs> because that is right up his alley. Our guest tonight is the Bradley Brownell freelance journal. Does that matter? GRM message board OG. I guess that matters. Weekend <laughs> contributor to Jalop. Where did it? Who go, Who wrote this resume? Mental. Managing editor at flat com. That's important. Car hoarder, Porsche guy. I'd like to mention that I like the 912E. Mental likes the Boxster. And uh, former host of Cam and Tubbed, as well as DFL podcast. And most importantly on our show, co-founder of Radwood. Yay! Wow! What? That's what? impressive. Brad, so, welcome to the show, and why don't you start by telling us what you're working on? Uh, I'm working on my celebrity status, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, so, funny story. Uh, I've been away from home for a month. Um, I was on the road doing various things, including hosting a Radwood show. And um, I got back last weekend, and I, I needed to be somewhere today. And of course, uh, all of my three operational cars uh, were non-operational. Of course. <laughs> uh, Did you do that? I, I was think, that I, I think your definition of operational might need some work if they weren't <laughs> operational. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the the Audi is my daily driver. That had a dead battery. It had it been is sitting. A lifted S6, correct? It is indeed. It's a 1995 Audi S6 that I lifted seven inches. So far. And. It's Crazy. yeah, it's super safari. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a terrible car, but it's <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. We can admit that. That's good. Yeah. Step in the right uh, direction. Basically, all of my cars are terrible um, by most people's uh, definition. Um, I have a little bit of car masochism where I don't enjoy a car unless it makes me hate myself. <laughs> so <laughs> drives a little bit like a tractor. Um, sounds loud enough to burn your eardrums uh but <laughs> anyway um the audi is actually my nicest driving car and, <laughs> and, and it was dead and it's it's dead so i went on to the next one i pushed it out of the way and i was like oh my boxster it's not um it's not currently legal but it should <laughs> run Who cares? It should yeah, run. we don't, we don't no. care about legal <laughs> so i go to start that that has a dead battery <laughs> Do you have extra batteries around? Yeah. So I go to the front garage and I get in the 912E and that has a sticky throttle pedal and 
it wouldn't be advised to drive that. I need to get it up in the air and uh, mm-hmm. lubricate some of the joints in the throttle linkage. So I, uh, what I ended up doing was taking the battery out of the 912, putting it in the Boxster, and driving that. <laughs> so basically, when you, you you live in the desert, there's ample sunshine. Someone needs to get you yes. a solar battery maintainer solar, for Christmas. Solar charger, yes. really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't That's help him today. So no, it's that. always a fun when you have s- several janky cars. You're like, well, I always have one that works, even though they don't yeah. all work. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I've um, had it where the where the battery that can jump things is trapped behind the cars that can't that be moved. Can't be moved. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, if only I had a 30-foot long pair of jumper cables, I could fix this. This I've is had, ad- adding to your Christmas list. I've, yeah. had, to, uh, I've had to daisy chain some uh, jumper cables together. <laughs> <laughs> that is so unsafe. It's fine. Boom! It's we fine. got two <laughs> marks here. We're on the way. <laughs> All right. Chris talked about insurance. Chris, he mentioned safety. <laughs> We're totally on the way. Brad, what else do you have for us? Are you working on anything else? Uh, Yeah, I kind of. I mean, I'm going to L.A. to get another car on Sunday. So another that's a, Porsche, a... Isn't it? It is another Porsche. I'm getting a 924S. Um, Good choice. That is, that is actually going to be my track car. Bad choice. Uh, no, I changed my mind. No, no, because it's getting a Volkswagen motor. It'll be fine. <laughs> Terrible choice. Yeah, this is only getting the, worse. The clutch still yeah. takes sixteen hours to change. It's still perfect. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's I've all I've got nothing but time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. All good. Oh but my! It's, it's uh, it's gonna get a, a 1.8 T with a big turbo, and it'll be a lot of fun. Um. And yeah, so that'll be my my kind of track adventure kind of car because I don't do much track stuff, and uh, I want something that'll be kind of fun and radwood, and it'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, right, my right eventual... until it makes you hate yourself, which I guess is kind of your mo. <laughs> so it's perfect. Yeah. Right. Look, my if eventual you think goal. Drive like daily drivers can destroy your soul. Wait until you have a broken track car. Because there is nothing like watching people go around in a green flag and being like, one freaking bolt, and yeah. I could be racing too. It's always I, a $12 like, part. Yeah, I yeah, feel like, like right now we're like at some sort of 12-step meeting, and like Jeff's the old head who's like leading the whole group. <laughs> Folks, there is nothing worse than in your track car watching everybody else. We're not but, in the track we're on the track or on the grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the main impetus for this project long term is uh, I went to Bonneville this year and I have the salt fever. Oh, so cool. So yeah, that that car will eventually be a 400 horsepower, 200 mile an hour car. Mm. Oh, that's well, kind of cool. That's that's actually a good choice for a 924. Those are pretty slippery. So. Very slippery. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And so um, to move them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. So All that's, right. well, we that's are, what I'm working on. We are very glad to have you here. You are going to be uh, integral in our main topic. But before we get there, we have some news and notes. Who starts this? Is this mental? So, yes. Yeah. Now, two weeks ago, the great uh, guest number one, sorry, Brad, Eric Rude, but <laughs> you, you know him. Uh, Hell on Wheels Monterey well. Car Week was August 21st through the 25th, and he was having so much fun with everything else. Uh but when we were we had our guest last week, we were just so delighted that we're well we're going to Laguna Seca this year. His excellent recap got lost in the shovel or the shovel the shuffle. No so shovels here. We've, we've got some, we've got some stuff from Monterey Car Week, Chris. Well, we shovel something. Uh, Eric <laughs> said way way too much rad stuff this last week to even begin recounting. Although the turbocharged Pinto motor in the Nash. And the two-stroke Saab 93B stole the show for me. Here's here's some winners. First in points, the Moose Tang, a Saab story. It's a 58 Saab 93B that broke down during an ill-advised side trip to Mexico. That's a good choice. <laughs> I'm sure I they have hear plenty. that story. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> this is all we have. We just have I was going to say, I, I think I'm, the rally was from, Eric. what, yeah. the rally started in, what, Vegas to Monterey? Where was it? No, it always it starts in Monterey and it goes back to Monterey. Oh, Monterey! But okay, it goes it was a like, loop from Monterey. Yeah. yeah, last year I went on this with him, and it was Monterey to the Canadian border and back. 
Oh God! Oh, God. Yeah. In oh. in four days. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! And there was a casualty of that because did you come home with an MG? I yes. did indeed. They, they yeah, destroyed and... MG. <laughs> that MG is being traded for the 924S this oh. Sunday. I now, everything I said about sure bad choice is now that. good choice. Uh, yeah. I, I... <laughs> Wow. But the, ba- the the bad thing is the 924S doesn't run and the MG does run. So ah, for, for now, but the MG know. doesn't look like it runs. It looks <laughs> like if you park that downtown in any small town, it's getting towed as abandoned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen my collection of cars? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, these I, guys... I mean, I could park the Boxster downtown and somebody would tow it away because it looks like it's abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> So these guys in the 58 sub, they're someone you want to have a couple of beers with. That sounds great. Uh, second in points, the Bologna Pony, a 79 Ford Pinto Pony, so the awesome. cheapest car sold in America in 1979. That's got something going for you. I love these line items and, here. And the Pirates, <laughs> a Land Rover Ho, a 96 Land Rover Discovery Pirate Ship. And there's a lot of Land Rover yeah. Discovery love around these parts. Yeah. So. Sure there is. Yeah. Some other uh, mentions from Eric. The Jay Should Hire Guy Award. The Boombox 1999 Ford Econoline 4x4 with massive sound system and a stage. Uh, the organizer's choice went to D2, D2K Motors. A, that's a 54 Nash with a Thunderbolt Turbo Coupe engine. Random Acts of Stupidity went to Santa Sleigh 1984 Mercedes 190D. And there's a bunch of dishonorable mentions. The Surgeon Rod. The Saab uh, Sonnet. A Highway Patrol Hillbillies in 1950. 59 Volvo 544 Team Dodgy Van in their Dodge uh, B150 Van 83 Van and uh, another dishonorable mention to the Team Road Rage 82 Chevette also the cheapest cold car sold in America in 1982 yes Chris you know how I know this is a West Coast thing <laughs> oh, <boy. Yeah. laughs> all, all of those things don't exist in the East Coast anymore not at no. all no, no, they're just to, rusty and gone. Yeah, I went to a junkyard today, and there was a uh, Plymouth. What's the Dodge Omni version of a Scamp? Plymouth? Horizon. Oh, no, no, no. no it the was Scamp the... is the pickup truck. There was the yes. Horizon. 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 Yes, yeah. there was a a minty, rust-free Horizon in the junkyard today. Wow. Which, if I'm not mistaken, in like '84 was the cheapest car sold in America. Probably, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. probably. I well, thought you get more excited about the Dodgy Band, Jeff. I really thought I, you'd get excited. No, Chris is the Dodgy Band fan. He oh, always never wants one okay. of those. Yes. Yeah. I love Dodgy Vans, but <laughs> Chris we don't is like just a Dodge. Over them. What? Yeah. No. Hey, so, no Dodgy uh, band. Eric also probably didn't listen last week because, according to him, he's been tied up fixing his daily driver and hadn't had time to write a damn thing. But he I'd like to, to point mention... out on his Facebook he had a rusty hub. Oh. Well, <laughs> he he did. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> it was an actual photograph of a rusty hub. Those who those who read Eric get that joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he did mention that he should regi- that everyone should register for the Root Sucks D Suck uh, uh, lemons rally. He's pimping every re- lemons he can. I guess they're paying his bills these days. Uh, his current plan is to bum rides in a different car each day and write and help that to, uh, I guess, produce the story. So you too can be part of the root sucky suck. And let me tell you, from my uh, experience in putting journalists quote journalists <laughs> into your crap can rally car. Yes, I'm talking to you, Brett Burke. Wherever you are out there. Actually, I just saw him on Facebook today. I will never put a journalist in my car ever again, including ones that eat beans from shoes and carry puffle lumps, because it's never led to anything good. I second yep. that. Hey. Oh, hey. So oh, I, oh, oh, wait. I am, a, oh, shoot. I am an that. above average driver, and I will have you know it. <laughs> yes, but, you're like a car show producer or something now. <laughs> so he said uh, the Concourse de Lemons. He wants to t- pimp that, and we're going to talk about that. He says the, the Concours de Lemons at Monterey was absolutely packed this year. The, long at Se- the lawn at Seaside City was completely filled. There were more than hundreds of people there. The Lemons Rally finished up, finished up at the park across the street. So it was kind of like a sideshow, all the uh, rally cars. And it was awesome, and you'll there's, there's coverage everywhere. Where, um, I saw the worst in show winner on the YouTubes, and it is a <laughs> sight to be seen. It kind of looks like an Excalibur or a Zimmer, but it's a Gremlin, 
and you have to see it. It's mm, amazing. Yeah. Oh, opening fine, link. Good. Fine. Fine. Opening link now. Everybody's yeah. opening the link. Yeah, we will put yeah, the link in the show notes. Oh. From the Haggerty.com article, hashtag, oh. they should totally sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the same way that... Haggerty, they're good people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd in be the same way Larry that... Larry would just listen to the show. The same way I found the roles of just, like, in between things at work, I go Craigslist a random thing. This is how... I do that with Zimmers and Excaliburs every once in a while, <laughs> just to see... <laughs> Well, this thing is neither Zimmer nor Excalibur. I'll yeah. just say it kind of, oh. sort of looks like them. I don't yeah. know. I, I do still kind of want it. Yeah, dude, you can't have a Zimmer. Zimmer's oh. a Fiero underneath. I know, but Excalibur is totally could. That that, that would breaks work. your Fiero role. It does. Well, interestingly, it, there's a there's an Excalibur club in Paris, France. And I don't know how <laughs> such a thing exists, but it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> That is that is wow. that was pretty amazing. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't San Sanjeev's got a Zimmer? Yeah, he bought one. Of Why course, not? Probably. There are so yeah. many good cars in this this article. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, just go click the link. Chris, tell us about what's going on over so, at Thompson. Uh, it, it, it was the Champ Car Twelve Hour Thompson baller racing team their 87 crx hit a 24th overall with 311 laps which is great and their fastest lap was a 127 for the weekend and that's hauling so i don't know what they yeah. have in that car but that's hauling well done we gotta find those guys and talk to yeah, them totally uh Seriously. the faux shogun racing 93 festiva finished next to last Aww. with 93 laps oh at least yeah. they started Aww. yeah uh, Jamaican Bacon, the 17 Miata Cup car, had 193 laps. They got him 32nd overall, but it did get him fourth place in the four car EC class. And <laughs> so, that's, uh, that's wrong. Oh, yeah. That sounds oh, great. Well, oh. just because we were talking about the, you know, they had the Miata Cup car right. and we'd had some incidents with them before. So a little jab. And speaking of little jabs there, Matt Connolly Motorsports in a. Boring. Boring. BMW 330Ci won overall with 414 laps, and they set the fastest time of the race with a 123. So, actually, Matt, nice job. We like you. We like your team. Get a better team name, man. Come on. This right. is a Chris's soapbox that was on last. That, that was my rant. <laughs> you can do better. We know you yes. can do better. Jeff, what's going on this weekend? Yeah. So, World Racing League. Comp du Lax at Brainerd International, which is like Minnesota or something. Eight hour race Saturday and Sunday, along with a Super Miata two heat Saturday. World Racing League has picked up this Super Miata set and it seems to be doing really well. There's a new registration system, which means we don't really know who's entered in this. Uh, but we do have 23 cars, four BMWs, one Miata, three Honda, and four Porsche cars. Porsche. And one, Jeff's favorite. <laughs> Mercor XR4 Ti from Futility Motorsports. Young Chris Egan better sue them right now for their team name. Yeah, I was going to be like, but, uh, that's not, they're not going from what New Hampshire to Minnesota. To Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. They don't have oh, a yeah. Mercor. Yeah. They it's make like, other oh, turbocharged have... bad decisions, but not that one. So. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to point out, because we did have the list of the entrants up there, and conveniently, in Chris's highlighted color, all of these cars disappeared because they were boring. And this is the first race we've ever covered where the Porsches outnumbered the Hondas. It's... And suddenly, everything's boring. They're all still boring. The one <laughs> non-boring car. We let... There's only 23. There's not that many to choose from, and they're all boring. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. I, 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 and this, is, this goes to, there was a Cayman in there, and we've had this conversation where... AER and WRL kind of live in that world where old race cars are starting to trickle down, but really fast crap cans are starting to come their way up. And it's it's interesting seeing how those two are meeting up in these in these series. Yep. Yep. Mental read what Jeff says. There you go. Yep. No, I got and, it. And you know, boss. Got it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So, yeah. Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat. We'll do a quick plug here. Some of the world's best supercars at over 20 race tracks in America and Canada with no speed limits, no shifting restrictions, and no governors. So, even if you're a uh, a retired podcaster or a <laughs> car show producer and you can't get your Porsches to run, you could head to xxspeed.com and choose your supercar, find a racetrack near you, and start making a story of your own. Seven models of the exotics to choose from, 20-plus tracks a year-round location in New Orleans. Pro instructors like Chris, Jeff, or Mental in the car with you, helping you explore the car's limits and learn how to drive the racing line. Save 25% today when you use the code Everyone racers, no space, 
everyone racers at xxspeed.com to book today it's your turn and we are pleased to announce our listeners that Everyone Racers is the official media partner of the second annual Flocktoberfest, an epic annual gathering of road coast endurance racing enthusiasts who live to drive really cheap race cars at really cool racetracks. So if you've ever wondered about budget racing scene and you've currently run with Lemons, Lucky Dog, Champ Car, Chump Car, WRL, AER, NS, uh, NASA, SECA, or a variety of HPDEs or clubs with like Porsche or BMW, this is your ten chance to attend North America's first and only largest endurance racing meetup of this kind at an exotic chicken ranch. If you listened last week, if you didn't listen last week, go back to last week because we talk all about it. <laughs> happens sec- is the second annual fo- Flocktoberfest. It happens Saturdays, October 6th, 1 to 6 which we decided is not going to last till six uh, in Oakley, California, rain or shine. Now there is free parking, but there is a warning along with the infamous DC Doug, who has been one of these every year, there will be chickens wandering and they're not responsible for eggs laden vehicle, either from the chickens or from Doug get discounted advanced tickets. Now kids 16 and under are free new for this year. They've got overnight camping, but space is limited and you got to reserve it online. RVs campers got to be self-contained because they've got no RV hookups. It's a chicken farm people, no water, electric or gray water dumps. Tent camping is cool, but you still got to get a camp uh, camping permit per tent and you know, it's california they're kind of on fire right now so no open flame barbecues due to the fire danger yeah so since we know dc doug will be there we know there will be alcohol <laughs> um, so make sure dc doug has his alcohol okay wristband and uh, make sure everyone brings their id because they will be making sure everyone is wristbanded and safe the net event proceeds will benefit the local brentwood 4-h club so if you have any questions, you want to sponsor Flocktoberfest, we can email them at info, blah, 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 blah. We're going to put these in the show notes because no one writes down an email address. But just know Flocktoberfest. Google it. You will find it. And or hit the little button and check out the show notes. Let's not forget our favorite tent dog, Kathy, is giving away a free entry to a lucky dog race to a lucky listener. How cool is that? Again, if you didn't, if you're missing all this, go back to last show. Uh, it, it is going to go to the bit.ly slash everyone, everyone lucky, all one word, capital E capital L, whatever. Just click the link in the show notes. Um, <laughs> winner is going to be announced October one. So do it. Bitly. Everyone lucky. That's all you really need to know. Oh, okay. everyone lucky. Got yeah. it. Yeah, just Google it or check out our show notes. Let's move on to listener feedback. We actually have people listening to this, not just Bradley in the corner. And it's not so, just hate mail, which is great. It's not hate mail this week. <laughs> I know. Well, let's let Chrissy read the first one because I think there was one you really wanted to read, Jeff. Yeah, we could do that. Go ahead, Chrissy. <laughs> oh, Cal from uh, said on Facebook, our previous guest, who was two shows ago, uh, great info about getting started in racing by knowledgeable people who have been there and done that. If you want to avoid years of mistakes, listen and take notes. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. You are wow, awesome. Wow, Cal. That's like high well, end. Because he knows we have made all of the mistakes. All the mistakes. So, <laughs> yeah, it's very clear. Uh, and Todd Carver, frequent commenter and consultant for E1R, also wanted to recognize the rest of the Rocksteady Racing crew that put them on the podium for WRL at High Plains. Becky and Darnell and crew worked in hospitality. Uh, drivers were Brian Dombrowski, Brian Pendleton, Chris Mills, Jim Rowland, and myself. Couldn't do that, that group of people. Thanks, Todd. Oh, that's nice. And uh, finally, from Johan Samantha, I said, (laughs) please, let me read this. He is also known as the GD exclamation point, yo man, in lemon (laughs) circles. He says, so what do got to do to be, quote, serious guest on your podcast? I've been enjoying the episodes and would love to get on some of these great conversations, whatever the topic. Also, I have been drinking. (laughs) Otherwise, I'd be too embarrassed to just come out and ask. Thank you to the GDO man. We are definitely going to have you on a future. I believe he was on the Barber episode. He was. Yes. He 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 might have been drinking at that time, too. He kind of (laughs) wandered into our RV while we were doing the podcast and uh, gave us some fantastic comments. Um, also giving us fantastic comments at all times, Chrissy's mom. Hi, Chrissy's mom. The first listener. One. And I just want to mention, we're all going to see you in about a week and a half. Yes. And and she doesn't have to bake anything. You don't have to bake any cookies at all. We're She's okay. got other stuff to do, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Take care of the other stuff. Don't worry about the cookies. Main topic time. Wow. 
That's Thank exciting. Thank God. It's been this a while. Is how, well, this is how excited <laughs> Jeff is about this. I, I but he's so also not excited. in a closet right now. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> I mean, besides our guests, and that's awesome. I'm you surprised know, I, like I, the I dogs been, are howling right now, Jeff. That was impressive. I, it is. I have been internet stalking our guest for a very long time. Oh, in, in the in in the good way. <laughs> I you know not um, at all. I, like like <laughs> I, like about a year and a half ago, my idiot friend Mentals like, hey hey, I want a podcast. You should all listen to it. And mm. we're like, oh, whatever, dude. I listen to every podcast on the planet, and I clicked on this podcast and I really enjoyed it. And then like. Three months later, he says, uh, if those guys can do it, we can do it, too. So you're kind of the founder. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not wrong. I, I, was, <laughs> I was drinking at the time when you we came up. You multiple times while drinking, which means <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's a fine yeah, that choice. Does, then. That doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> I, I'm also going to also gonna mention that I cleaned that up a little because it was something about, like, yeah, if those effing idiots can do it, we can do it. No, I'm not kidding. He didn't say that. I mean, that's still uh, correct. That's still 100% correct. Yes, yes. Uh, no, he, he had he had reverence for you, and I have been uh, following you on the internet and following the expansion of Radwood. Just yeah. just incredibly impressed. Uh, why don't you start by I don't know. You already kind of did introduction, so give us the elevator speech for those of, who might not be on the internet or or have any understanding of the car world. What is sure. Radwood? Sure. Well, if you're stuck in the Radwood era, then you probably wouldn't be on the internet. So, uh, unless True. you're like really early internet. So, um, like, sure. BBS no boards. BBS boards. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Radwood is a an automotive festival for 80s and 90s uh, culture and cars. And um, we started about a year and a half ago, and it's been a lot of fun. Basically, the show it started as just kind of a show for us and our friends. Like we were, we were talking about it and somebody asked like, what, if you could do any car show, what would you want to do? Or any, any automotive event. And one of the guys said, I want to do like an, uh, an American Goodwood. And, you know, we got to thinking in like uh... a week, a week later we were like, well, what about if we did, uh, you know, Goodwood has like the fifties and sixties and early seventies covered pretty well. And that, era fits really well on an English estate in the countryside. Like that's very, yes, you know, absolutely. You know, England was exporting culture, especially in the sixties. You had the British invasion music, you had, you know, clothing and, and, and all of that was very big. And in the eighties and nineties, we're like, you know, if it's going to be an American show, it should be the American era. And everything from the 80s and 90s was very brash and colorful, and we were exporting culture through, you know, Hollywood got really big in the 80s and 90s. Big budget films started coming out more and more. Um, I think it really started with, like, Star Wars. I wasn't there, so I can't know, I don't know for sure, but looking back at the era, that's kind of, like, where it came from. So The old, the old dude in the show is putting himself. <laughs> but, um, I, was, I saw Star Wars in the theater. <laughs> I, I did too i just barely remember it <laughs> so uh yeah it, it basically um you know the 80s and 90s was very american so if we we're gonna do an american goodwood with the dressing up and the culture and the you know all of those little things in between um we wanted to do 80s and 90s plus that's kind of the era of cars that we grew up in because it's all we could afford was you know 10 year old cars when we were started driving um, yeah. so I'm yeah, one totally. of the youngest members, founding members of the show. I'm 31. Uh, the oldest guy is 37. So we're all kind of in that range. Awesome. Um, where we started driving, you know, I, I got my license in 2003. So my first car was a 92 Pontiac Grand Prix. It was a ter- 91 Grand Prix. It was terrible. Juggalos! Juggalos! Sorry. Anytime yes. I mention a GM product, front wheel drive ah. GM product, we have to woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> you have to woo woo. Okay. That's the Eric Rude rule. It, well, especially yes. the, the Jugga Lambo really is the, yeah. the, the best one. Oh, the, yeah. the GXP, yeah, for yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. Yeah. And uh, Rude also likes to reference the Jugga Lexus. Yes. Like the, oh, the Which Bonneville. is the uh, the Bonneville. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I, I want to tell you that I spent a long, a lot of time in the in the back end front seat of a Jug Alexis when I was in high school because nice. my best middle middle school because it was when we first got our license. Uh, my best friend Ton Franz's dad had one that was green with gold wheels, and it was the most amazing thing ever. Nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we we first started the show about a year and a half ago because uh, that kind of got the ball rolling. And we're like, well, if we're going to do this, we should just do it. And we just decided to have a show for basically for us and our friends. And we start, started promoting it on Instagram and we started talking on social media and on all of our podcasts and trying to get people that we knew to come to this park in San Francisco. And we were like, you know, it, it, we rented the park for like 300 bucks. <laughs> Dead show up. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm like five beers deep now. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you fit it just so, fine. So, well, I had to drink something to keep my hands occupied while you guys were talking for an hour and oh. a half. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Most of that oh, was mental getting fired. set up. Sorry, yeah. not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, so we we rented this park for like 300 bucks. We got a taco truck to come. They came late. Um, and we invited all of our friends. And we expected, you know, 40 cars, 50 cars, something like that. And uh, 150 cars showed up. So we kind of, you know, once the show was over, we sat back and we were like, huh, maybe, uh, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something to it, yeah. Maybe there's something to it. And um, to their credit, Jalopnik reached out to us and they said, hey, we love the idea. We love the show. When's the next one? And we're like, uh, uh we hadn't really thought uh, that far ahead. Dude, let me get back to you. My, my date book is in my car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we were like, well, uh, you know, we did the first one in June. Let's, uh, let's shoot for Los Angeles in December, you know, shoot for the moon and see what happens. And, um, 370 cars showed up for that one. So, uh, and like 4,000 people. So that was, oh. uh, that was a pretty big deal. So, you know, fast forward a year and we just had our San Francisco show actually just before the Atlanta show, we had our San Francisco show that was 600 cars and 6,000 people. So yeah, it's grown literally like five times as big in one year. And there was was some amazing, like the gull wing, uh, that thing. Yeah. 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 That, that was, was like, at the LA that was a show. Blind Vice like featured episode style car. That guy yeah. brought ten cars. Oh, what? <laughs> he brought a ton of Mercedes. He brought a um, a Cadillac. Uh, what's the one that was on the um, the Elante? No, 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 not not that fancy. Um, <laughs> oh, the Cimarron, the the Cavalier, the big one, the that was on the Caprice chassis oh fleetwood. Fleetwood. fleetwood yeah yeah one of those um so th- you know they brought a bunch of stuff there were uh you, you know literally we've had shows where there was a geo metro on dayton wires you know with pink sparkly paint sitting next to a ferrari f50 i i so it's like, this. <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally so you know we totally have uh, a wide variety of people that come to these shows it's a, uh, you know, every walk of life. Um, if you love cars, if you love eighties and nineties culture, if you love extreme sports, you know, we've had, uh, BMX riders come do exhibitions. We've had, we've going to have some, uh, skateboard dudes doing some expos at, uh, the Philly show next month. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun. Shoelacing um, competitions. <laughs> that was a first time. That was only because Pharaoh was there. Um, <laughs> it was a weird idea, and it worked way better than we expected it to. So uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so, so what's next oh, for Radwood? When did you, you mentioned it. Yeah, uh, Philly is coming up next. That's going to be our, our show <gasps> October. <laughs> Jeff's excited by this. <laughs> October 14th. He's shopping for um, mullet wigs and ashen wash jeans as we speak. I'm yeah. just going to get my leg warmers out of the box. Nice. Up there, you know, over there. That's going to be uh, at, the, at the Navy Yard. Um, there's a like a, a a big park there in the middle, and it's going to be on one. Of, we're going to close off a street, and it's going to be on one of the streets that back up to the park. So hopefully we'll be, it'll be cool. 
<laughs> we just need to know um, if we're allowed to bring our, our the the best car we have. That's it's not a '90s car technically. It's the 05 NSX. So you know, if you wanted to swap to flip up headlights like tonight. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Those that, that's fixed right, headlights Chris. kill it. It's I mean, I love NSXs, but the fixed headlights kill it. It doesn't look oh. like a nineties car anymore. Um But it does have the uh, the little uh race car or the R C car um radio antenna. antenna. Oh, okay. And it goes up when you turn the car on and it goes All right. Yeah. You know what? If you uh, if you show up and you're like, oh, it's a it's a facelifted car. It's a '99. <laughs> oh, perfect. Good. It's yeah. a so, it's so, a '97 that somebody facelifted. I you know whatever. All our other '80s you know, and '90s cars are hella broken right now. That's a problem. <laughs> like the yeah, wide body gonna... turbo giraffe Civic broken. The '92 oh. 300 ZX broken. The Isuzu Ombre gone. Sold. Like, all broken. You the, have a uh... book. There's the one, French, nothing, the everything can be fixed in one month. Yeah. Well, oh, except, so, we're, so, except we're getting married in 10 days. So I, I will that. absolutely be registering my camouflage and barred uh, 1990 Mazda Miata. Yeah. October 89 build date. That's one of the earliest Ooh, in the in That's the country. a really early car. Okay. That is. Cool. I dig it. So. Um, there are a bunch of things on the docket for Radwood. We want to expand. We want to, to branch out. Um, one of my longtime goals is to get it to be a, a track weekend, like a vintage race, um, similar to a, a Goodwood revival or something yeah. like that. Oh, cool. Um, that well, yeah. is, that is going to take some, some effort because, you know, guys with nine, six twos aren't exactly easy to reach. Um, <laughs> by, by design. Hey, we'll we'll bring out our '89 Civic. So good, yeah, <laughs> great. And and I want to have I want to I want it to be inclusive. So I wanted to have um you know this is obviously very early stages. We've got nothing committed to paper or anything. But um my idea is to have a um a number of classes that are kind of entry level classes, like a Spec Miata class, uh, a Crap Can class. That is, you know, if we had a Lemons event uh, as part of the race, you know, where you get like a two hour sprint or something like that, um, it would have to be 80s and 90s cars with 80s and 90s themes. And I think that would be totally do that. We'd be there. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Um, I still need to talk to Jay about that. So, you know, it's not really a secret because it's going out on a podcast. But anyway. (laughs) At least right. 87 people listen to our podcast every week. So. <laughs> and then we'll say, this is cool, and they will be the people that yeah. show up. And, yeah. like, one of one of them's in Sweden. So, yeah, he's, you know, he's not going to tell well, anyone. I mean, if, if Yo Man hears this, then it's going <laughs> to get back to Jay eventually anyway. So. <laughs> That's probably true. Via, via Phil. Uh-huh. Yes, um, absolutely. Say they're going to do an 80s-themed race. <laughs> yeah. Dex so, Robot Dixon. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I I did I load like a question. Phil would be in. No, Phil, Phil would be, be in, in without a doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's <laughs> the one that created the malaise era. Yeah, of course. So it's a little earlier than Rad era, but, but it's definitely yeah. What, what, definitely so there. what is malaise? That's like seventy five to like ninety eighty four, eighty six. Yeah. Okay. Like anything, when, anything with a Lando roof and opera window, yeah. Okay. And, and fuel injection that didn't work. Or okay. computer yeah. controlled carburetors. Anything yeah, that was yeah. from that era. That I have some part. stories about that with my nine twelve. Yeah. Um Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. You <laughs> know, I, I I love the nine twelve E. I think that's like I love that you like this is your father's car. You've had this like forever, right? No. No, it's not your father's car. You've no, had this forever I, though, right? No, I've had it for two years. I think internet it's internet I think stalking it's is wrong, Jeff. Yeah. No, not, I, I, actually, I, I see his internet stalking is very good. I think I know how he got here. I think you've confused him with Manny Carrillo. Who he oh, went, it is uh, Manny, because you Manny's, spoke to Manny about his He got 9/11. Manny's 9-11 running in a weekend. Yes, yes. yes. It's it's exactly what it was. Both, both well, of those things. I, I, uh, I love the 912E because I think it's awesome. Um, it, but really, we need to know, because you just bought a 924 is it possible that there are worse Porsches out there that you're like still hunting? <laughs> well, the, the 924 that I bought is an S. Is so an it S. Is, it's true. not yeah, it's terrible. True. But um, yeah, the 912E is actually slower than the 924. Um, 
if if you can believe that uh the zero to 60 is like 12 7 i think shoot yeah, yeah. It, it, it has the volkswagen derived engine that was like punched yes. out a little yeah it's the it's the two liter that was in a uh, 914 but it has the later air injection so it's like a uh 80 ish horsepower like 85 um rather than the the 914s i think at the end was like 97 or something like that it, it's yellow so. it's a 911 it has crinkly bumpers <laughs> it the, one of the most beautiful cars in the world that's why a I lot of it. a lot of people confuse it for a 911 and i just don't don't correct them. So, um, <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's, there was, they made like 10, right? 911, 912. 912E was a one year only model. It was a 76 model. And they made 1,099 of them. No, 2,099 of them. That's, yeah. not a, that's not a lot. No, it is not a lot. It's one of the, the least produced regular production Porsches ever. Um, basically, it was a stopgap for the US market. Uh, because 914 bodies had run out and they weren't ready to introduce the 924 yet. So they needed a, an entry level model for one model year. And they were like, well, we don't have 914 bodies anymore, but we have all these type four engines sitting around. What do we do with them? And Hans is like, put them in the 911 and ships them to the stupid Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we could charge them more because it's lightweight. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's actually a ton of fun. It gets smiles every time I drive it. I I love driving it. It's the loudest, dumbest, most terrible car ever. It does need a muffler. I'm not. I it needs a muffler. Right now it's straight piped. It's not. It's not a good sounding car. It's very very loud. It sounds like two Harley Davidsons that are sitting next to each other. Because there's no crossover tube, so it's just two cylinders going thump, 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 thump. thump, 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 thump. Well, now it's fantastic. When you're it's manually backing it into your parking space at bike night, do you sit there and rev pretending <laughs> <laughs> that you have some sort of reverse? Uh, uh, and, yes. I, it's just, Jeff, you mentioned yes. this. I pulled this off of my bookshelf next to the computer. There are way worse Porsches than Bradley's 924, and I would like to exhibit People's Exhibit A – my 924 when I was stationed in Germany. and <laughs> What the hell is that on the hood? A hood scoop. I bought it that way and then immediately <laughs> took it off. But the guy, <laughs> and here's the thing is, it not only was it a hood wow. scoop, but he had mounted gauges in it like a Pontiac. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it. I wow. love Terrible. everything might, about that. It's amazing. might be winning. <laughs> All right, I, I I have another like somewhat lengthy question for Bradley. So yes, um, you 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 have been around this podcast car world for a very long time. Uh, oh, you just closed the Cam and Tub <laughs> Tub podcast. I was a recent fan, like I mentioned. Three part question here: Why do they call you Tub? Is that a fat joke? Yes. Okay. I Is... I I came up with the name because we were like hey let's start a show and we're like what do you want to call it and i was like i don't know your name's cam let's call it camden tub like like a like a muscle car you put like a, a cam in it and you tub it out and there's a whole thing but um we were like eh, it's kind of not that great but like whatever nobody's listening we can change it in a couple weeks if we want to <laughs> and it's stuck <laughs> yep and that. then four years later it's the same name so yeah that's that's how it started there you go. Well, uh, you've listened to us for about 45 minutes. Is there any hope for us, or should we pack it in now? Uh, this is episode 51? 51, yes. 51, yeah. okay. Um, you sound about right for 51 oh, episodes. <laughs> is that uh, it's almost as terrible as all the Porsches we mentioned earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the last part of the question is, uh, what would make you lose more money in time, podcasting, hosting a national traveling car show series, or a heroin addiction? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I definitely lost money at podcasting. Right now, we're breaking pretty well even on hosting a car show. Uh, heroin's pretty expensive, isn't it? I don't even know. Uh, this is a this is a meth town, son. Oh, all right, there you go. <laughs> oh. uh, Brad, did I, you I... get a chance to listen to that sound file I sent you with Terry Gross doing that bit? I I don't even remember when you sent me that. Oh, no, it's I, in the show. It's in the show notes. But, but oh. your comments right there. I didn't. Oh. I, 
Oh after no, show, I did not. I did not. After the show, you'll listen to it. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I just did. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So you've done some cool stuff, man. Just like across the board, you've been traveling a lot. You were mentioning you were on a uh, another car ride up. What's the coolest thing you've done this year? Probably Bonneville. Uh, Bonneville was like almost life changing. Just being out there and seeing it, like. So I have I have a history with the salt. Um, I I had never been there before um, at, during the races, but I'd been there. Uh, I proposed to my wife at at Bonneville. Oh, yeah. We were on a cross country road trip and we stopped in Salt Lake City and I had the ring. I had had it for like a month, and um, I was like, we have to go to Bonneville to watch the sunrise, and she's like. Sunrise is at like 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I ain't doing that. And can we just go to lunch, like lunch? <laughs> and Salt Lake is like two hours from Bonneville. She's like, we'll have to get up so freaking early. Like, do you really have to do this? So I was like, I have to do this. I have to. It's going to be amazing. You'll love it. It's great. And uh, so she was tired and cranky when I proposed, but she became happy. <laughs> You didn't get more tired and cranky. And just, <laughs> ah, great. Now I'm stuck with this guy. It gets me up at three in the yeah, morning. Exactly. And go stare at exactly. salt. So, and you know, I, I, did I do have a lovely wife. She is a sweetheart. Amanda's the best. I, <laughs> I still love her dearly. I, as I hope I would, but, um, <laughs> we have been together since we were sophomores in high school. So, uh, it's been a while. And, Yeah, so I I had that, like, emotional attachment to the salt, and I had never been there when there was racing going on. And when I finally got to see racing going on, it completely changed my life. And literally got to see, like, the piston-driven record broken while I was there. Like, I got to see that run happen, and it was amazing. In in what? Uh, It was uh, Danny Thompson. So this is the best racing story in history. Absolutely. Oh, I'm excited. So Mickey Thompson, the tire guy. Yeah, that guy. (laughs) That guy uh, started racing at Bonneville, I believe, in 1960. And he started with the um, Challenger 1. And he, yep. well, I, yep. it was just called Challenger then. It was but. like a streamliner, right? Yes, it was a streamliner. And, and it was powered by four Hemi engines, one at each wheel, which is like the best thing. Um, and that one ran, I don't remember exactly what it did, 200 and... Yeah, 260, two, somewhere up there, right? I can Google it if you care. Keep yeah, going. I've I've written it all up, but anyway. Um, Five beers, I, we get it. I should, I should look it up. But uh, so... He ran a, a number. I think it was 201, and it, he was the first American in the 200s, which was a big deal. And then a few years later, he developed Challenger 2, which was a twin-engine streamliner that was more narrow than it was wide. So it's very long and very narrow. And this one, I believe, was like 68 when it first came. Yes, when it first came to the salt, was 68. And uh, it... It ran one way a good record, and then it rained, and he couldn't repeat it, so it wasn't an official record. And so he shelved the project, and he started Score, um, Baja 1000, and then he started his tire company, and he started his hop-up company, and he ran Indianapolis and won Indianapolis and all that. So it kind of just got pushed to the side, and it was in storage for a bunch of years. And then he was murdered in the late 80s. And his son was like, I'm never racing again. Um, he just, you know, he took over the family company. It went bankrupt. <laughs> they uh, had still some issues. Still make good tires. He, still make good tires. Lots of good tires. Um, and so he was like, well, I'm going to sell the company because I don't know how to run it. And I'm just, I'm, you know, washing my hands. I'm done with this. And so for a lot of time, he just stayed out of racing because it just brought up too much bad stuff. And then somebody said, hey, I've restored your dad's car. I want you to race it at Bonneville. And he's like, yeah, I guess I should do that. And then he got back out there and he's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I I love it. And I'm doing this forever now. And so he got back into it like really hardcore and he brought challenger 2 back out of storage restored it put two 1500 horsepower motors in it and these are these are dry blocks they do not have coolant in them 
because they only have to run for like four minutes, which is just amazing. And it runs mm-hmm. on methanol and it's, it makes 3000 horsepower. It's all wheel drive. And it's just the coolest thing to hear take off from, from the start. And just and, to give our listeners bingo, I don't think the airplane I was on in the Air Force made 3,000 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um, last year, he brought it out and he took a record. I don't remember what the record was last year. Uh, I have it. Oh, yeah, I have it both of them, but keep going. Okay. Um, and this then is the this... correct internet information? I'm sorry, yes. Brad. No. Uh, according to the Road and Track story I'm reading. <laughs> Road and Track? <laughs> Oh, I couldn't find your story. <laughs> Mine is on Jalopnik. It's uh, I've got it right here. So, um, yeah. So the original record was four oh six sixty. That was Mickey Thompson in nineteen sixty, and then he went four fifty point nine in uh, Challenger two, but then he couldn't back it up. So then Danny comes back and he brings the same car, and he runs it to. Uh, 446.605 and let's see That's moving. And then he backed <laughs> it up he yeah. backed it up with something crazy but the, the best thing is when he ran last year he ran within a tenth of a mile an hour of his dad's first run at Bonneville hmm. within uh-huh. one tenth of one mile an hour of, of that 406.60 he ran a 406.70 which is just amazing wow um, I got four forty eight seventy five as the yes. combined record. The two, yeah, the two speeds are average to give the final record of four forty eight point seven. Yeah, and he already had the class record of four thirty nine, so he beat that, and that was yeah. So that is the piston driven land speed record, and it was amazing. I mean, oh, four hundred and fifty miles an hour is yeah bonkers uh, it, it's it, it's in, it's inconceivable how fast yeah. that is <laughs> on, on the ground this word. yeah, no, be, yeah, that's, yeah. it actually becomes harder to stay on the ground at that point that's, that's yeah, probably yeah exactly yeah yeah um i mean the thing weighs like 50 something 5200 pounds wow uh, because of that and yeah. so yeah it's Oh, I was wrong. It wasn't a pair of fifteen hundred horsepower engines. It was a pair of twenty five hundred horsepower engines. <laughs> oh, well. oh, oh, yeah, just you know, thousand eleven hundred horsepower off. Yeah, yeah. So each it's, side, it's, though, each it's, twin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's two of them. Yeah. Literally, right, one. It's like one pound per horsepower in the in this car. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, that was that was a cool experience. I got to do that. Um, thanks to Indian Motorcycle Company, they invited me to come along, and nice. it was it was really cool. So that was probably the coolest thing I've done this year. Radwood's probably second. Wow, <laughs> that's, no, a, that's high praise. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, now, Brad, we're about to kick over to our final segment, and we do want your input on these segments. But before we start rolling into that. Where can our 87 intrepid listeners find you and all your stuff? Because you are you are all over the interwebs. Where can they find all of your uh, stuff? Yeah, I mean, the best place to look for Radwood stuff is uh, Radwood Official on Instagram. We post there pretty much daily. Um, the <laughs> the Radwood uh, Facebook group is massive and growing I mean every one. day. Yep. Um, and we have, I think... Between my posts and the posts of everybody in the group, I think we're averaging like 70 posts a day. So it there's a lot. You could just like hang out in there and, you know, never go just, away. Just don't ask, is my car rad? Because that's just going <laughs> to that's just going to open up a can of worms Does that you're not, well? you're not interested in. Yeah. Uh, usually I'll say, yeah, it is. And, you know, it is. But uh, sometimes people will post like. 72 volvos and i'm like nah, no no go away <laughs> I, mean, no. I mean don't don't go away but like yeah yeah as like, cool yeah. but not rad exactly. as as a joke i posted a picture of my t-shirt which had the uh 911 target and it said solly i pro- remember when i promised to kill you last i said is my shirt rad and everybody loved that nice. yes that's a good shirt. Um, and then myself, I'm on Instagram at Turbo Brad. That's T U R B O H B R A D. I live in Ohio. I had a turbo. I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> you can't get rid of it. I know all about this. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, I'm on Twitter at BC Brownell. 
and I'm on Facebook. If I know you, I'll friend you. That's fine. <laughs> hey. uh, what about your, I'm, what about your I'm friends stuff? with the what yo man, so I'll be. i clearly I have <laughs> low standards. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> what about your print work? Work? Who are you writing for? What What do you got coming out soon? Uh, I just drove something today for uh, Excellence Magazine. It's a Porsche. That's magazine. a that's a Porsche magazine for you Honda freaks on the other end. Of the <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I um. I am uh, every Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday on jalopnik.com. I am uh, basically every weekday on flat6s.com. That's a Porsche website. Uh, I frequent Hooniverse. I wouldn't say frequent. That's that's an incorrect <laughs> word. Uh, I am occasionally on Hooniverse. Um, I wrote there for a number of years, and I owe them most of my career. So, uh, you know, I'm very thankful, but uh, it's time-consuming. So... Um, and then we had Glucker on a while back too. He was hysterical. Jeff is, Jeff is one of the coolest guys. I, I love that guy. Yeah. Um, I am occasionally in auto week. I'm occasionally in, well, I would say European car, but it doesn't exist anymore. Um, <laughs> Haggerty.com, bring a trailer. Uh, basically anybody that has money, I'll write for them. So <laughs> Pimp yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's yep. Cool. yep. That's great. Um, we, we do want you to stick around for the last section. The last section is called Hella Sweet or But Terrible, and I'm going to uh, set up the situation, and everyone tells me whether I'm wrong or very wrong. Um, <laughs> actually, neither of those are an option, but you can feel free to make anything you want. So uh, we are a uh, six, six weeks out from seven, eight, seven, eight weeks out from. Yeah, something like that. The Six Halloween Hoopty seven, Fest, seven, one of our seven, seven weeks out from our fa- one of my favorite tracks in the United States, the Lemons Race at New Hampshire Motorsports Park called the Halloween Hoopty Fest. And I don't have a ride because we blew up our Honda and we haven't built it yet. And I just sold the other race car. So and we haven't my, built the Z. And yeah. we haven't built the Z yet. So it's, it's I mean, a terrible hey, situation. How's the, uh, how's the Citroen paperwork? Yeah, no, it's still there. Um <laughs> How, so the, the the terrible situation I'm in is my brother and I don't have rides. Chrissy has a work obligation. Uh, Chris got hooked up with Tom Lomino, who didn't only had one seat available, so he obviously gave it to our fastest shoe. Um, or he asked, and you didn't. No, no, I was I was asking at the same time. We were oh, there together. We made mine. the presentation together. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so now I'm stuck between two terrible ideas um i can borrow a car from a friend who shall be remain nameless manny um but then i have to manage the team so i have to find there's two seats available then um i have several options because manny has several options of cars some are cool some are reliable neither are both um, I have options. Brad, anybody give you a uh, you know a thousand dollars to write an article about uh, New Hampshire? Jeff yeah, might have go. a seat for you. So um, I have <laughs> a options. Thousand dollars? Come on. No, 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 it wouldn't be. So uh, I have options for people that I can fill the team. Some are reliable. Some are cool. None of them are both. Uh, <laughs> cars. Um, see, yeah, but but. I will have to manage that because no one else is really going to step up and be in the leadership role of that. And I, I, the whole reason we're selling the ombre is because we're tired of managing uh, uh, unreliable and non-cool people. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. They're all listening. Uh, so, so the other thing I can do here, Jeff, I, I know. So oh. the other thing I could do is totally pimptastic, find an arrive and drive, probably not find one for my brother because the seats are driving up drying up quickly um i might be stuck in something really lame like an opal you know um yeah so i I, there's the bell huey of cars though the bell huey of cars absolutely so those are my two options I'm stuck between hella sweet or but terrible. Give me advice around the table. Maybe we should disclude mental because he wants one of those seats. No, no, no. No, no. Mental is going to be in Ohio that weekend. Oh, never mind. So then you can answer. Folks. All right. uh, Jeff, you're really good at managing a team as you displayed in February when we were all down at Barber. But it seems like you're tired of it. You just want to show up. (laughs) It does. I, I feel like you're tired of it. You just want to show up and drive. 
So I'm going to go with find a seat. And, and here, the thing is, I'd go on the lemons board and say, hey, I'm Jeff. I'm available. You're a solid shoe. You know how to drive. You know how to spend a wrench. And there's a lot of teams that would suddenly probably find a seat for you. Chris, what you got? This is really weird. I completely agree with mental. <laughs> no! <laughs> I know. <laughs> also, hence uh, what I did. You know Exactly. <laughs> Well, we both pimped to Lumino because his car is rock solid. That's true. Except it was broken last race. It was not rock solid. Eh, his car right is... up until it breaks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're all reliable. It's, it's a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. not sorry, Brad. Yeah. If it uh, works, it'll be good. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I completely agree with the two of them. Pimp it. Yeah. yeah. Just do Bradley, it. how do you feel about uh, Austin Rover? Or not Austin Rovers. Rover... What is that thing? Any idea? 30, it's a Rover 3500. Rover 3500 is a possible steed or yeah. a Saturn. Oh, no. Saturn always. <laughs> Saturn always. <laughs> what, <laughs> what's Saturn? Like that? Oh, no. What's Saturn? It's a, it's I'm SL, not really sure. It's an, it's an SL1. SL1? One? SL? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, okay. The ones get good mileage. The twos are actually kind of powerful. Yeah. I had an <laughs> SL2 for a lot of years, and so the best thing about my SL2, it was actually my wife's car. We were autocrossing it, and she spun a rod bearing because all of the oil sloshed to one side, and one one bearing had no oil on it because those cars were notorious for burning oil, and she didn't check it before we went autocrossing. So uh, <laughs> I'll just throw the blame on her. It's fine. It was sure. years ago. Yeah, okay, she, um, she's not listening. Nothing to do she's with totally it. not listening. Ago. She's definitely not going to listen to this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, spun a rod bearing. We drove it 40 miles to my dad's house, um, got a set of, you know, um, zero, zero bearings, crammed them in. And ran it for another sixty thousand miles. Nice. Shut up. <laughs> all, all in thirty five dollars. Yes. Wow. Th- th- this proves the age old adage that your average General Motors car will run crappy longer than most cars will run. That's correct. Yes. Really? It was a great car. Um, I miss it dearly, and I'm. I really want to get a first gen SC one. And do like a hyper mile kind of car with it because that would just be great. You get like forty five miles a gallon; it'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but then the CRX HF just get that like right off out of the box. Yeah, probably. I yeah. mean, my nine my nine twelve E gets uh, like forty. So well, not highway. a surprise. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That helps when you don't have all those water pumps and everything dragging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> loss, parasitic or loss. or like air conditioning or <laughs> anything like that. Who yeah. expects Doss that? Systems. Well, awesome. I guess we have uh, one grab a Saturn and three screw everyone else and go get a seat by yourself. <laughs> Just ask. Um, maybe next yeah. week we will uh, find out an answer. Or hey, uh, if you are going to New Hampshire and you have a spot to. Uh, lend jeff or sell jeff uh let us know because we might be talking to people or something at people maybe that might have might have a, a seat mm-hmm. he's, you guys and everyone who listens know he's a rock solid driver and he's a great wrench sometimes come um, I, I come with my brother if you got two oh. seats definitely cool. <laughs> he can find his own seat yes okay all right so next week we got- Next week, next week is a special one for us. So, uh, not only would it be our one year anniversary for the show, uh, but half of the people on the show are getting married. So, mental uh, Jeff, Jeff, I, Jeff, I love you. Oh. <laughs> love you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling when I wrote that. Uh, all right, so we're gonna take a week off because we're traveling to a destination uh, that we and when we normally record the show, and then when there's a wedding. Um, so the show is gonna take a week off. And if you're lucky, you might hear from us, but uh, it will not be a whole show. Sorry, not sorry. See you in But two. you know what? Follow us on all of our social media because we will be taking all kinds of fun pictures on uh, maybe. All right, I'm going to be taking all kinds of yeah. fun pictures. You, well, said there's going to be an, you said there's going to be an ice cream Sunday bar at the wedding. So oh my is. gosh, we have Definitely. so much. I we have so much ice cream. That's totally going up on the so IG. I'm just throwing that out right now. That's wow, going to be pretty. Cool. The IG. 
Insta, 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 insta grack, I think. Right. Uh, and then insta, at least, insta grick. at least Jeff, Chrissy, and I are going to be at Radwood in Philly. We just have to put in our uh, absolutely get our tickets there. So there we go. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So okay. meet us at Radwood, Philly, or if you're on the invite list, the Chris and Chrissy wedding, or if you're not, just tune in next week when I will say. I, I guess I'll do the. Uh, the uh, oh yeah, I got it. You got it. Uh, All right, I'm ready. Right. Okay. All right, so folks. As always, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe button on iTunes. I promise I'm working Google Cast. I really am. Uh, or wherever you get your podcast. Or if you have any questions, want to give us some show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Like our team Facebook face page, the Three Pedal Mafia Lemons Race Team. Find Jeff a ride. Give him that, too. If you'd rather not venture to the void that is a book of faces so they can steal more of your information, just email us at everyone.racers at gmail or find us on Instagram and Twitter at everyone racers. Thanks again, and thanks to Brad. Brad, seriously, thanks so much for stopping by. Until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep the wheels down. Thanks for having me. <laughs>